All right, what's up guys? What's growing on? So I am in Longwood today. It's the beginning of May. It's about midday and I just got a chance to pick up this camera. It's been raining here all morning and we are back at one of my favorite landscape installs probably over the last two years or should I say maybe favorite landscape transformations. And this was the Don't Be a Grass Hole project we did here on the lake. I'm sure you guys remember this one with the beach. I'm sure you're dying to see what kind of progress we got. So you ready to look around this yard? Hold tight. All right, so as you can see here over my left shoulder, standard suburbia, grass yard, irrigated, fertilized. Um, and then right next to it, we have an ecological landscape using mostly permaculture methods. And some people might say, oh, that's not permaculture. Um, the, pur the permaculture purists might kind of attack me. So yeah, maybe everything out here isn't true you know, permaculture, but this is what we call an ecological landscape, a permaculture hybrid. This is what can be done on the urban scale. Um, I really think this project turned out quite amazing. And you know, to remember when we came in here, this was all grass. There was an avocado or two here. There was a, um, a couple of mango trees here in the yard that got transplanted. And here today, you can see our sign. Whoa. And we're here today to actually do a little bit of a follow-up, cleanup, chop and drop, fertilization. Overall, just kind of see how the progress has been doing here on the property. We're touching up the shell path with maybe a yard or two of some shell just to kind of freshen it up a bit. But more or less, this property doesn't need me. I don't have to be here today. Um, Lynn, the homeowner here, who's just absolutely awesome, has this uh, guy, Abube, who's awesome also, who helps her with the landscape. She actually hired a landscape company to help with the entrance and the jasmine. You know, they come like once a week and they do this little kind of formal thing you see over here behind me with the viburnum, a little bit of turf out here by the street, and then over here on this side is all jasmine. So they kind of keep that edge in check where a bube comes and he does maybe some of that pruning, maybe some of that chop and drop, maybe some of that is pulling a weed. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the species here. I'm gonna do a little bit of a walk around, show you guys what's ripening. Um, I don't know, let's see what we can do. So over here on the um, east side of the property, we have Vitex and Fakahatchee grass, lots of Gallardia, perennial peanut on the ground as a ground cover. And a lot of this kind of looks a little bit beat or battered or maybe in between. The Gallardia was just cut back. Um, the tick seed is just setting seed. The Mexican sunflower is all ready to be cut back. So that'll be getting chopped and dropped and laid around the fruit trees. And it's almost kind of hard to see the fruit trees in behind here because of how large that is right now. So if I have a chance, I'll pick the camera back up later and show you this bed after it's been pruned. There's lots of fire bush in here. There's an avocado actually covered in fruit, big old sweet almond, uh, lychee over there. And you can kind of see that the leaves on the avocado are slightly pointing downwards. That's a common trait with your avocado trees when they are setting fruit. I believe it's just a little bit of the stressor. So they're kind of stressing. You'll notice the leaves start to sit down. That one's got really nice avocados on it. This one over here has really nice avocados on it. And that was the, um, the, the two that were here on the property. So this area right here was all African potato mint. And you can see the African potato mint is just starting to sprout back up. And that's gonna make a beautiful dense ground cover that is in the mint family, but actually makes like a little Irish potato under the ground. Awesome summertime ground cover here in Florida, beautiful perennial. You can see some more of those avocados all over this tree. And it is just loaded. And let's step over here to this property edge and just kind of show you the difference here between suburbia um, and an ecological landscape, a food forest. You can really see kind of where the two meet. I mean, we have, you know, fertilized irrigated grass meeting up a, against this, you know, food forest, ecological landscape. Lots of uh, native firebush, Hamelia patens. This is the true native variety. Hummingbirds like it. Does attract butterflies and beneficial insects. Um, I don't see any flowers right now on the Caliandra, but this is the Caliandra tree. Ooh, do you see some seed pods? That's not a common one I see on this one very often. Pretty cool. Uh, I see a mango tree, I see a mulberry, and this whole area has got a combination of peanut mimosa. And that's one thing that I could say that's done really, really well here are the ground covers. I mean, the mimosa in some of these beds, like this bed right along here, is just dense all the way back to the house. Um, all of these figs have small little figs on them. You can kind of see they're all setting right now. The blueberries are even covered in blueberries. So, ooh. Not something we usually plant, but they're doing really well here on this project. You can see some more blueberries and some more blueberries. 
catly, or uh, I'm sorry, not a catly guava. That's a persimmon. Um, the persimmon on the other side was just starting to set some fruit. Oh, I do see a couple on this one too. You can see that little flower in here. Oh, got to get out of my way, leaf. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that is a flower set right there. All Simpson stopper here along the back. And something I missed as I was walking in. This is a really nice dooryard tree, um, front yard tree, you know, because it's evergreen, has a beautiful trunk, but it also sets fruit. And I really think this can be used in the front yard like you would use a legustrum tree, like that umbrella shape they stick in front of the normal, you know, HOA. So there is a lemon variety of this cat leaf guava. There's a strawberry variety. Both are really good. And this one is super cold hardy. This isn't like your normal Barbie pink or um, some of the other tropical guavas. This is actually a different species. This will grow way further north. I've seen this as far as the panhandle. So this is the cold hardy guava, the Catley. Something I wanted to point out, and I mentioned I know in the last follow-up video, I was kind of disappointed with the new growth on the Michaela Alba. And this is a uh, non-fruiting tree that just makes beautiful flowers that are super um, fragrant and odorific. You could open up your front door and you're gonna smell this just like you would the sweet almond. And it's finally pushing some new growth. This is a grafted tree. So really excited to see it's finally pushing some. Um, Galangal, she said, Lynn told us when we got here, they just cut all that back two weeks ago. So that's two weeks of new growth on the Galangal, which is a very common um, root crop that's used in uh, Thai restaurants, like your Tom Ka soup would have that. You could see the uh, pineapple guava or the fioja hedge in the back, really looking nice. Olives are really looking good. We're going to prune those a little bit. Lots of muley grass along the front here, a couple of dwarf firebush, and another one of these catly guavas kind of holding that center area. This one also has some fruit on it. So this whole place is just rocking out. Turks Cat Pie Biscuits are pushing some new growth right now. You can see flowers all over these. This is probably one of the most, or my favorite edible flowers. And you really want to just pull it out of that green cap. All hibiscuses have edible flowers. This Turks Cap is by far the sweetest. I grow a pink, a red, and a white. I think there's some different colors here. You can see the jackfruit tree here in the back. Um, all kinds of salvias over here in this area and probably one of the most successful things in this space has been the sunshine mimosa, mimosa strigolosa, native nitrogen fixing ground cover, sustainable lawn alternative, um, has beautiful flowers, attracts beneficial insects, and it just looks gorgeous. It's dense throughout this whole area. Looks really, really good. I think it filled in nicely. This is kind of the seating area, yoga area. You can see it's filled with native salvias. A pagoda flower, um, a mango that was here that we relocated, and here's some more of those caliandras, really looking good, like the powder puff. I wish this had some flowers on it right now. It's really epic. Sweet almond back in here. Forgot about the monstera in the pot by the front of the house. Those look really good. Got a nice monstera there. We've got a nice monstera there. And let me just point out, it's been raining here for about five hours this morning. It could start raining again soon. I might have to put this down. We'll see. Um, I'm really impressed with the black grafted Suriname cherries here. You can see this one's covered in flowers, but the size of the fruits on this center one, I don't know what the deal is. This one's dark green. That one just has flowers. This one over here has red fruits, but this one has the super, super dark ones. I mean, look at the size of these guys. You can see down here on the bottom, this one's probably a record setter. I don't know if I've seen them this big before. That one should be measured and weighed, but really really pumping out some new flowers and fruit at this time um, one of the only things i've noticed that hasn't done great were the couple of citrus trees that were here that we relocated um, this is probably one of my favorite things to see here on the property so this is the banana pit this is the chop and drop area we've been putting the banana fronds in here this morning we've been putting the moringa leaves in here pretty much everything but the weeds anything that has any type of seed in it that could sprout back up that we don't want we don't want to put in this chop and drop area um, but you know, that might look kind of, you know, slightly messy to some, but that's the nutrition. That's what's feeding these banana trees. So, you know, if we want to have a successful system, we have to get used to that look um, that might not be so manicured or maybe slightly messy. And I can tell you just coming from a uh, standard landscape background, this has been something that I've even had to get used to or accustomed to and to something that's kind of becoming the norm. So when you see this, you know that we have nutrition going up to the bananas. Galardia all the way along the edges. Um, here's one of the sad looking citruses, blueberries, galongo along the pump, and here is the wall 
of Passiflora edgeless. This is the purple possum variety mixed in with the native coral honeysuckle. So you can see the native coral honeysuckle in here coming in, flowering out. Um, I don't know if we'll find any open flowers on the actual passion fruit, but it is covered in fruits right now. Let's go around the backside and I'll show you guys a couple of these fruits. Talk about a wall of passion fruit and you don't actually have to pick these fruits when they're ready. So, you know, back on our farm, we like to grow them up the oak trees. They fall when they're ripe here. They're gonna fall when they're ripe also. So you'll basically just come along and check along the bottom down here and you'll see them laying there when they're ripe and ready to eat. Ooh, I see a flower. Are you guys ready for this? Oh! Tell me that's not breathtaking, huh? And I know I saw some green fruits over here. If you guys aren't following me on Instagram, when I first got here, I did a live video on Instagram. I post my stories every single day. So if you want to see more of me, those one or two videos aren't enough or you're more into that vlog style, I do more of a vlog style with those daily stories. So keep an eye out on the Instagram if you're not already. Oh, there we go. Oh, I know I see a couple in here. That's just a little guy. I think I saw a couple more down here on this end. Oh, there we go. Native coral honeysuckle again. Hummingbirds are happy. All right, paths all look really good. Like I said, we're doing some touch up on the shell today. Um, just kind of running through, generally keeping things off the paths and fertilizing the heavy feeders. We've got a uh, little wall here of um, Moringa. This is for daily eating of salads or juicing or powdering. Most nutritious terrestrial plant in the world. Pretty amazing. Lots of papayas. This one's pretty much ready to harvest. You can eat a couple here at the green stage. And we are out in the backyard. Whoa, kids area is looking pretty awesome. I will say, and I talked about it in the first video here, and I'm not going to beat these guys up anymore, but the only unsuccessful part of this whole project was the part that we didn't do, um, but we are going to do. I actually have another project coming up in Longwood in about three weeks. When I come back, I'm going to set aside a day to come back over here. And we're going to finish planting this beach and doing sunflower. We're going to put some more of that black mat down over there on the east side. We're going to give a little bit of a fire pit kind of seating area. Um, but we're going to basically just cover this in plants because, you know, Lynn is awesome and doesn't want to use chemicals, which I think is great. Um, but, you know, when you're right on a lake, torpedo grass, multiple species, not the proper prep done in this place. So, as you can see, there's no weeds over here where the dune sunflower is. So we're gonna try to continue that throughout. And this stuff can get tall. I mean, this is like three or four foot tall. Um, really makes a dense ground cover. You'll notice it's covered in bees and beneficial insects. It's a great one to add to the landscape, especially if you're close to the coast. So uh, there's some genetically modified grass. Now I'm just joking, that's that artificial turf. Um, but you know, Lynn has grandkids. Um, you know, wanted to give them a little bit of green space. So there's no irrigation going on here. No chemicals going down here. Yes, it has plastic, um, but what is perfect in this world today? So a little area of artificial turf in the backyard and the whole rest of the yard is an ecological landscape. Nothing to really complain about there. Um, up here by the back of the house, and you can see we're not done pruning. A lot of the firebush still has to be squared out a little bit. We still have to put the fertilizer down. Right now, the guys just got done going through this back bed, doing a little bit of a light weeding in here. Um, that still needs to be tipped. You could see we haven't cleaned up. We kind of cleaned up the Robolini palms a little bit. Yes, that's an ornamental palm, but we're just kind of trimmed them up a little. I'm probably even going to take the dead fronds and the seed pods off of these queen palms. Not that I like trimming palm trees, but while we're here, we have the equipment. We're going to get it done. Um, up in here, really cool area up in that zone one by the back of the house. There's a whole wall of lemongrass, and then behind that wall of lemongrass, we've got a wall of katuk, and there's a combination of varieties here. There's the green variety, and there's the variegated variety. That one is really nice to eat raw, tastes good. The new shoots on that, that new fresh growth is probably my favorite part. More papayas up here by the back of the house. We got a little bit of a mess to clean up. We got to get that shell out of the truck first. Here's that edible canna, edible flowers, edible roots. And this is a transitional bed right now. It's got sweet potatoes coming back up, but this has been in the past pumpkin sweet potatoes. So seminal pumpkin, boniata sweet potatoes, Leaves are edible on the sweet potatoes, and then we have the crop of the squash calabaza in there. Continuing that path, keeping going around the side of the house, another papaya with ripe papayas. Um, I already did a little bit of pruning to that olive tree. 
And you guys ready for this? Whoa. Okay, passion fruit tunnel. Whoa. Tell me that's not epic, okay? Totally love that tunnel. Turned out really awesome. Over here, we're towards that property line and down on the edge at the bottom, there's some bottle brush and elderberry just kind of breaking up the two properties. You can see the elderberry has the flowers on it right now. Um, we already did some chop and drop in this banana pit. You know, so this is another one. You know, there's some sugar cane in here. There's some Mexican sunflower in here. Um, there's a combination of materials, everything but weeds just stacked up here in the center. This was originally a pit when we did this and it's just been filling up with organic matter. That organic matter breaks down and then feeds the fruit trees, um, especially when you have things in there like tithonia or Mexican sunflower, you know, super dense, super high in nutrition. So super high in nitrogen too. Um, sugar cane. Here's that Arbuquina olive. And looking down the side of the house, lots of uh, tick seed coming in really nice. Here's a Mexican sunflower that's already been cut back. Here's that Caliandra. There's a big Mexican sunflower that still needs to be cut back and really, really, really impressed with this one. I think this is the biggest one I've seen in person. I've seen them bigger in pictures. This is that uh, edible leaf hibiscus. Somebody put a silly name on this. I think it was one of the commercial producers. They call it like Crook's Crump or something. I like to call it edible leaf hibiscus, but this can just be used as a wrap. This can be eaten raw. This can be cut up and put it in the salads. And it really has a nice texture. Some varieties are way more slimy than others. This one's not too bad though. It's really good. Nice to snack on, just like the cranberry hibiscus, which is a little bit sweeter and more fun for the kids. Oh, I like to always go for those young, really bright, vibrant leaves with the cranberry hibiscus. That one's great. Goes nice on a sandwich. Kids will like to eat that one. A little sweet, a little bit of sour, kind of both. Dwarf everbearing mulberry. Big old pagoda, just putting on a flower, another banana, a papaya with fruits and flowers, start fruit tree, we've got some peaches on the peach, more cranberry hibiscus, got pineapples coming in here along the back. And the other peach up here I definitely think had a few more fruits on it, mango, another peach, lemongrass here along the side, and the only disappointment here, and I talked about it in the last video with the Japotacabas, these guys can have a little bit of a temperamental soil requirement, really liking that acidity. Um, they tend to become chlorotic, so by doing like a chelated iron drench or something, you can usually get them to uptake nutrients, or you can keep them in a pot long term. I think we did a chelated iron drench last time we were here. We're probably going to do it again. If it fails again after that, and they don't start to look a little bit better, probably going to yank them up and put them in a pot. So this is the red Japotacaba, definitely looking a little bit sad, not where there should be. Here's a peach, covered in peaches. Persimmon, covered in persimmons. And the spiraling ginger is just starting to set its cones again and it'll have its uh, edible side cone flowers here very shortly. Another sad looking Japotacaba. We only put two Japotacabas here on the whole place. And this is the other one that kind of just looks a little bit on the rough side. Lots of salvias, more Turk's cap. Ooh, there's that pink one. Oh, oh, oh. I told you guys I had a pink one. Sweetest part is up there inside of the cap. Got to get it out of the cap. That's the key. All right, guys. So you know what time it is. That's a wrap. It's time for us to hit the road and get back to the farm. This is just a one day traveling project for us. Although I am gonna be back in Longwood in two weeks for a, about a 10 day transformation. Another don't be a grass hole transformation on a hill in an urban setting. So hold tight, lots of good stuff coming. We, uh, we did get done cutting back the Mexican sunflower on the right side of the driveway. You notice from doing that, it did expose some of those uh, yellowish leaves, I guess you could say. They look definitely a little bit more aesthetically pleasing as just a big green clump. All of that green manure material went around the fruit trees, around the avocado, around the mango, around the lychee. So we're done. We touched up the paths of shell. We uh, even tidied up some of the palm trees, knocked a cherry off the bush by mistake. But it is come together. All right. Oh, cleaned up the olive trees, reshelled all the paths, just did a little bit of a basic touch up around the whole place. So 
Whoa! So I hope you guys enjoyed this follow-up as much as I enjoy coming back to see projects growing and thriving like this. It's nothing more exciting for me as a designer, as an installer, to see a project thriving, looking good, looking better than when I left the last time. That's what it is all about. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. Most importantly, don't be a grasshole and pound dirt.